to the HICWA representatives, you began by talking about national clinical oversight. Um, in the, the Care Quality Commission in the United Kingdom, which is your equivalent, uh, are required that uh, a clinical lead be identified by each care facility by the 15th of May because the situation there was the situation which is still in Ireland that you have a number of different GPs going in and out of care facilities treating a number of different patients and there's no um, sort of clinical oversight within a care institution. Is that something that you'd like to see happen here? And if so, is it something that would require legislative change, given the committee's remit? I'm not, I'm not specifically aware of, of, of that particular uh, recommendation by, by CQC, but I don't think it was a recommendation. It was a, it was a legal, they, a legal requirement. requirement. Okay. It, it certainly would be something that would be worthy of exploration, I would believe, in, in, in the current context. And I think because COVID-19 is, is here with us and probably w to be with us for quite some time, I, I believe that certainly that would, be, uh, that would be a useful step. Worthy of exploration as yes. far as you go? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, I, I think that there is... I, I wouldn't want to sort of bounce into something that, 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 w that is unexplored at the minute and just how that would actually work in the context of nursing homes, but certainly clinical oversight would be, would be extremely useful, yes. Uh, do you have any view on it, uh, uh, Ms. Dunning? Yes, I, I think, well, I think there's an expert group uh, brought together now by, by the Minister and we, we'll welcome to see what their, I suppose, interim arrangements are. I think there is a longer term issue and it is around the policy around uh, the, man uh, the care of older people and the alternative pathways that might be there for them so and I think that's really worthy of exploration uh, and I think uh, the legislation and the regulations uh, are, it would be timely for those to be reviewed uh, and to be considered by the Oireachtas. You. you raised the issue of multiple um, uh, rooms with more than one person in it or even a number of people and um, while I appreciate that it's not ideal and, and certainly not suitable at all in these times, but beyond that, there are patients who do not want to be in single rooms, um, and I appreciate that that may not be possible to facilitate that now in these times, but as hopefully at some point we return to normality, I expect that there will be patients, one of whom was very close to me um, until earlier this year, um, who are adamant that they don't want to share a room and be isolated. And uh, I just wondered, as HICWA in laying out standards, people should not be forced to share a room, but people should be able to share a room perhaps, or is that something that you have a view yes, on? Yes, I think we're very conscious that uh, we view a nursing home as somebody's home. It's they've made a decision to, to, to live there. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, it's important that it is designed to meet their requirements. I think what is really important though is, and to, to go to your point, it is what is the future of, of, of the sector. Uh, and there's many different type of steps I think which would really be important. And that would be recognizing that, that some um, residents don't require the same level of care as others and therefore there would be different types of facilities eh, and we're more than delighted to share a paper that we've done and Thanks. that would look at the regulation of services as opposed to the premises which is as we say all about rooms facilities and that. Um, Dr. Keneal, Keneally, um, you, you earlier pointed out the, the, the frailties in the testing system that you could test negative one day and, and positive the next and that we need to be wary of that. Um, if, you, if one tests positive, obviously they're put into iso one is isolated or for 14 days if they're in hospital or a care facility. Um, are, are they tested at the end of that 14 day period? So uh, they, up, up till recently, um, people were regularly tested um, at the end of the 14-day period, and, and that's, that's still um, ongoing. I think one of the issues around uh, that, that we've, I suppose, understood in the course of, of people who've been hospitalised around a deputy is that some patients have been persistently positive beyond the 14 days on testing. But what we understand better now than might have even been the case um, some weeks ago is that the uh, positive status that you get at 14 days um, has probably very little what we call active virus in it, so its potential for in infectivity is low. Um, so the guidance has been amended to say that actually if you test positive still at the end of your 14 day period you're recommended for a further isolation period of seven days and there's no further testing after that period. So that came through uh, the um, uh, uh, National Expert um, Advisory Group on, on COVID-19 that, that, that meets on a 
a frequent basis to assess this evidence as it's coming through. And sorry, just if I could... So it just means, sorry, in terms of people who want to transfer who may have actually been positive at the end of their 14-day period, they are actually still safe to transfer um, uh, after, you know, once they can actually be accommodated in um, single room accommodation at the, uh, you know, for that seven-day period, because we believe the risk of transmission to be very low at that particular point. So then if, if, if there's sort of random testing in the population, how do you know whether it's somebody testing positive at the beginning of the 14-day period, in the middle of the 14-day period, or at the end of the 14-day period? No, oh, it'll depend very much on, on whether or not they had symptoms, to be honest, Deputy. Now, I, I'm not a virologist or a, a COVID um, you know, infectious disease expert, um, and some of these questions might be better directed towards them. But essentially, um, patients knowing when they may or may not have had symptoms will um, clearly kind of influence when we might know when the 14-day period might have started. But in general, the day it is taken that the day of the day of, of the first test result that was positive, uh, in the absence of symptoms, you complete your 14-day quarantine period from then on. Thank you for answering my questions, and thank I'd like to thank all witnesses for answering all of the questions of all of the committee members. Uh, thank you very much. I now suspend the meeting until 4:30. Uh, thank you.